So today we're gonna to be looking at a plant that you need to avoid. You do not want this in your tank, unless like you're really going for something really unique and specific, but just avoid this plant. The plant I'm talking about is the common bladderwort. Bladderwort is the epitome of a weed. It is a long, stringy, crappy little plant. Doesn't even look good. That unfortunately I had as a hitchhiker on one of my plants that I got in my shrimp tank about a year or so ago. It eventually took over the whole tank. Every time you try and get rid of it, it pops its head up and goes, hey, I'm still here. It's not super fast growing, like, it's not gonna just overnight all of a sudden just be all over everything, but it's just such a pain in the butt to get rid of that when you try and pull it out, you're gonna end up breaking it. And if you break it, it will just turn into a new plant. And it likes to just get intertwined in all of your other plants. So sometimes you just have to throw out all of your plants just to get rid of this thing. I'm annoyed because I have found it in my new Dutch scape. I will show you what it looks like in my Dutch scape and show you how I'm trying to get rid of it at the moment. And uh, just you can see how lush the Dutch scape is. So how on earth am I gonna find it in the middle of all of those plants? So you all know this tank as the Dutch scape or if you haven't seen the channel yet, this is my Dutch scape that I'm working on. Uh, we're still going through this cycling process, but one of my plants brought this ugly, disgusting, weedy bladderwort. It is all over the tank and it entwines through other plants and see how I just broke off a little bit. If I've missed some, then it's just gonna continue growing. All right, trying to do this one-handed. So there's some more over here. We'll get rid of that and there's a lot more stuck in the back of this rotella. There it is. This stuff is the worst. Try and focus on it. Because I've got that uh, algae, because we're sort of not finished cycling this tank yet, you can see a bit more of the algae on it, but it's very hard to focus on because it's so tiny. It's super invasive and it's actually, yeah, like that, look at that. I've been pulling this out and I thought I had all of it out, but I've got bits like that hiding. As you can see, I'm trying to make this tank look really nice and pretty and uh, end up with, you know, some, I'm thinking like lemon tetras or cardinal tetras, some gourami, some ottos, but this plant is gonna ruin one of my plans of having a mano shrimp in here potentially. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Go away. <laughs> so originally for me, it came on this plant over here and you can see there's still a little bit coming out of it every now and then. And that's all I was focusing on, but it's obviously spreading. I'll get a little bit more while we're making this video. Look at that. Oh, it just broke, which means it's more coming. Now for that reason, I'm a bit nervous about the Dutch scape. I'm going to just continue going as hard as I can with it, with the water changes and CO2. And I'm having a few issues with the tank because some of the equipment is not performing to my expectations. Uh, but so I'm gonna be really, really, really strict on trying to get it out every time I see it because I've gone too far just to start all of that again because of this annoying little weed. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, well, I don't really care. It actually doesn't look too bad and I like natural plants all through my tank. This plant is a carnivore. It actually feeds off things like Daphnia, uh, insect larvae, and I'm not gonna say it definitely kills baby shrimp, but I have been told a few times in multiple sources that it can kill your baby shrimp. So if you've got this in your shrimp tank, it's a massive no-no. Now you've got a plant taking over your other plants and killing your shrimp potentially. It's hard to just prove that it's killing a shrimp. It's not gonna kill an adult shrimp, but baby shrimp are really tiny, so it, what it does, it does try and eat things like baby shrimp. I found this poster online, which is fantastic. It gives you a real good explanation of how this plant actually catches its prey. And uh, you can imagine this thing's growing throughout your tank. 
and each little bladder or little polyp thingy is actually there trying to catch food for the plant. This post that I found was on popside.com, so I'll leave a link below so you can read that and thank you guys for putting this information out there because it's not that easy to find. They had a poster from Y Man Chan, who was a graduate from the biomedical visualization of the University of Illinois in Chicago. She put this together and it sort of explains exactly how it all works, so I'll be sharing this with you on the screen as we speak, but you can see it's a really predatory thing. Looks like something out of Aliens. So let's take a look at the trapping mechanism of the common bladder wart with this amazing poster that we found. You can see here that the diagram shows four main sections to the mouth of the bladder. The platform, trigger hair, door and antenna. The mouth secretes a mucilage which is basically food for the unsuspecting prey. The antenna is there to corral the prey towards the mouth and the trigger hair is ready to spring the bladder wart into action. The pressure inside the bladder is much lower than that outside the bladder and then when our unsuspecting victim pushes on the trigger hair, the door flies open. The water then gets sucked straight inside the bladder bringing the victim with it and now it is trapped. The water pressure equalizes, the door closes and the plant starts digesting its prey. This can take a few hours or a couple days, but the plant can try and catch its next victim in the next 15 to 30 minutes. So why are you probably not going to go down to your local fish store and see this available and think, oh, I want to get that. Look at that weird, crappy looking plant. It could hitchhike on your other plants when you're buying them. So it's another really good reason to do a bit of a peroxide dip or, you know, put your plants into a tank before you're putting them into your aquascapes and that sort of thing. Because once it gets a hold, it's really hard to get rid of. Bouncing around on different forums, trying to find ways to get rid of it. Everyone just seems to laugh at everyone and says, good luck, because it's ridiculously hard. So the only method that I've found that seems to make sense is honestly starting the tank over again, getting rid of all of the plants and uh, starting again. And I know most of you are not gonna wanna do that. So if you've seen this in your tank and you didn't think anything about it, but this has helped you out, I'm really glad. <laughs> and especially if you're keeping shrimp and wondering why you don't have as many little shrimplets, it could be the reason. Again, as I said, I'm not gonna say it's 100% what's happening, but it makes a lot of sense. If the video helped you out, please hit the like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We've got plenty of videos trying to help you fish keepers out as much as possible. We're having a lot of fun with the journey along the way. We've got some saltwater stuff we're coming up with in the next couple of months. We're changing that around. And have you seen the Nintendo tank? It's sick. Until then, I really hope this video helped you out and hopefully it saves a bunch of shrimp lives or definitely Daphne lives. Daphne is good food for fish, so you don't really want plants eating it. And I hope you're all well. Until the next video, I will see you guys soon.